Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. Dylan here will Eric Trump, Donald Trump's son and one of the executives of the Trump Organization just dropped a bombshell that you do not want to miss, alright? He came out and revealed the truth about the attempted assassination of his father. He actually spoke about almost losing his father and Donald Trump Jr. also came out and spoke as well. So Eric Trump, he, you know, he's, he's, he's showing up for his father. The whole Trump family is in full support of Trump 2024. They showed up, all of them, to the RNC to really rally up support from America to go ahead and vote for Donald John Trump in 2024. So we're going to dive into this bombshell of an update from Eric Trump. But before we do, we are going to read the Bible and pray because God comes first. Amen. Comment amen down below if you believe that. We're doing a special Bible reading today. One of you guys actually commented and told me about this, that God saved Trump's life at 611 on that Saturday. And if you take a look at Ephesians 611, it talks about God's protection. So maybe God was protecting Trump during that minute. All right, here we go. This comes from the book of Ephesians chapter 6. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything, to stand. Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, and pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints. Amen. Comment Amen down below. And we saw during the Republican National Convention, Donald Trump Jr., he shed a tear as he saw his father walk out on stage because he knew that God saved Trump's life. God saved his father's life. God wanted Trump to survive that day. For whatever reason, Donald Trump turned his head at the very last second and that bullet whizzed just grazing his ear. It literally could have pierced the skull and everybody would have witnessed the assassination of Donald John Trump on live television and that would have not been pretty. I mean, that would have been horrible to see. And there was still even tons of blood gushing down his face as he stood up and chanted, fight, 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 because Donald John Trump wanted to show to America, hey, look, I am not giving up. We just saw Joe Biden completely give up. He dropped out of the race. That is not what Donald Trump does, all right? He literally got shot and he says, I'm not giving up. Joe Biden, he just gave up. I mean, how embarrassing for his own party. All those people who showed up to vote for Joe Biden in the primary, and now Joe Biden's just, ah, I'm not going to do it anymore. I've, it's embarrassing how, un, you know, Democrats like to talk trash on Republicans, but dare I say, Democrats, they have no unity right now, and things are looking really good for Donald Trump 2024. So let's tune in to Eric Trump. All right, so first of all, here's Eric Trump talking about Secret Service. Let's tune in, guys. So I know all those agents on stage and they're the greatest people ever. In fact, the female that's in the picture, she's with me for a very long time and she's one of the greatest human beings you'll ever meet. I would do anything for her and I'd do anything for her. I'm telling you, Katie, they're, they're the greatest people ever. And every single one of those people would have taken a bullet for him that day. And, and they did, they jumped in and um, I don't put any of this on them. In fact, I, I, I laud them for their courageousness and being heroes that day. Uh, because they could have gotten killed as well. They easily could have gotten. Those bullets were flying over them just as closely as they were flying over my father. Um, at the same time, you know, they moved to, with him to a location, right? That location is already secure. Um, whatever happened in terms of the setup of that location, whoever allowed a rooftop that large to be unsecure at 130 yards, whoever allowed a madman to crawl up on that rooftop with a rifle, there are real questions to be answered, and it, it, it hurts my soul because, again, I know the dedication of the Secret Service. I know those people intimately. I know their family. I know their, 
and these are some of the finest people you'll ever meet, and they would have taken a bullet for them, and they almost did that day, but there was some breakdown. Outside of his ecosystem, there was some breakdown, and they better get to the bottom of it. So that's a very classy response that you see from the Trump family. You will notice that the, even the way Donald Trump speaks about the whole incident, he, Donald Trump, guys, and the whole Trump family, they had the opportunity to use that attempted assassination of Trump's life. Obviously, everybody knows, like, nobody is questioning that Secret Service should have had that building secured. That should not have happened. The Trump family, everyone could have used this as opportunity to create division, to create, uh, you know, chaos, to say, you know, oh, like, just to go after the government. And that's something that the Democrats typically would do. But you see from the Trump family, pure class. They're act you actually saw when Trump I issued his first statement, he actually thanked the Secret Service. That's a very humble thing to do because the very people who you could blame for the responsibility of, you know, you getting shot, you actually thank them for the people who did, you know, jump on him at that time. So... Just a very classy response, but at the same time, he's saying, you know, we do need to get to the bottom of this. So I actually gained a lot of respect for Eric Trump after I heard those words. Now, let's tune in. This is uh, the day after, the day after, I believe, or the next day after Trump got shot. This is Eric Trump speaking. Let's tune in. Well, it's been a pretty somber mood, right? I mean, my father got shot at. Somebody took off half his ear. Um... But I can tell you, my father's never been more determined than he is right now. He is um, hes more determined to make America great again. He's, um, he's got incredible fighting spirit, no different than when he's pumping his hand in the air with blood running across his face. And uh, I'm really proud of him. I've never been more proud as, uh, as a child, as a son. Uh, he's a remarkable human being. He's got backbone that's unlike any person I've ever met before. And as I said before, we're going to win and we're going to restore prosperity in this country. And he's going to make America great again. Yeah, I love that. Eric Trump is a man of simple words. I actually really like Eric Trump a ton. He's been he I he's come up on my radar a lot more recently. And we're going to listen to his RNC speech in a minute here or in a couple minutes here. I want to get through some of these other exclusive interviews that you probably haven't seen before. But I actually really, you know, value the words coming out of Eric Trump's mouth because remember he is a top executive at the Trump Organization. He is very involved in the Trump Organization, but more so on the behind the scenes stuff. Typically, we don't hear a ton from Eric Trump. Usually, we hear a lot from Donald Trump Jr., but Eric Trump, he's typically not a guy who's, you know, posting hour-long podcasts every single week like Trump Jr. is. Eric Trump, he's still working day in and day out on with his father, so it's, you know, it's really cool to see him kind of step into the limelight at the RNC. And by the way, we see Tiffany Trump and her uh, husband, Michael Boulot, who is actually the newest uh, Michael right here. I believe they got married in 2022 or 2020. I, I think 2022 is when they got married at Mayor Lago. So uh, Tiffany Trump and Michael Boulot, they're, Michael's the newest member of the Trump family, basically. I mean, the newest family member because he obviously married into the family but he actually comes from a very interesting background as well um he all he already came from money so we know that michael did not come to the trump family to go after money he's already set for life but very cool uh you know michael i think michael is a very interesting guy i'm uh, curious to see how his involvement is going to be with the trump family but let's tune in more this is eric trump talking with this uh, reporter from CNN who actually used to uh, really dislike, she was the one who interviewed Donald Trump during that town hall with CNN, but she she's actually kind of like, she's kind of like a Trump supporter now. Like, yeah, well, thank you. I am here pretty crazy. on the convention floor. I'm sitting here with Eric Trump, of course, Donald Trump's son, who was down there earlier as his father clinched the nomination formally and was put over the top with a number of delegates. Thank you for being here. Uh, first, can we just talk about the last 48 hours? Because it's been pretty remarkable, 48 hours for your family. Uh, when you talk to your dad about what happened on Saturday night, that attempted assassination, what has he told you about what those moments were like? It's just terrible. I sat there with my, you know, two infant children, and I, I watched the whole thing happening. I can obviously recognize the sound of gunshots, and you hear them coming through across the, you know, the TV screens, and it's it's horrifying, right? He had blood coming out of his ear. He had blood on his face. 
He was on the ground. You didn't know, if he, you know where else he had possibly been hit. Obviously, it was a huge sign of relief when he got up, when he put his fist in the air and you know, said, fight, fight, fight. And it was an incredibly courageous moment. And, but it's heartbreaking as a son. I mean, first of all, it's heartbreaking for this nation. Our nation should not be in that spot ever, 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 ever. Uh, I think all of us will remember exactly where we were when we heard the news that Donald Trump got shot. Where were you when you heard the news? I'm not going to lie. I was resting. I was taking a nap and I woke up and saw Trump got shot and I went, what, what? I watched the footage and I saw him stand up and I go, oh my gosh, thank the Lord. And then, whoa, then, oh yeah. I started doing my research, but where were you when you heard the news? Because yeah, I think we will all remember that day. Um, it must've been but, scary but, though, as a son. It's, it's terrifying, I love the man. Um, he's a remarkable father. He's been a great guy to me. I, I, obviously, you know, there's no one that supported him the way I have. I've stood on the stage every single day for the last, you know, eight, nine years of, of politics in our family. I run our company. Um, yeah, Eric Trump literally runs the Trump organization. This guy's a beast, guys. Thumbs it up for Eric. He's just a special guy. He's a big part of my life. He's my best friend. And yeah, to, you know, to see him get shot at, it's, it's unthinkable. Did it take you a long time to get in touch with him and to be able to, to actually talk to him? Listen, I know everybody in the ecosystem, as you can probably imagine, so I was in contact with them when they were in the vehicles, but no one quite knew what was happening until they got to the hospital, and finally he was in the hospital, and, you know, I get a call from him, and, um, you know, he cracked a little joke, and I knew, you know, the, the Donald Trump I know, the father I know is, you know, was back. And wow, that's crazy, guys. Obviously, they're playing um, uh, uh, music, so I can't tune into the rest of that for copyright reasons, but... Let's listen to Eric Trump and Donald Trump Jr. totally own this reporter. This is so epic, guys. It was a real hilarious moment at the convention when Donald Trump Jr. told an MSNBC reporter to get lost after he started lying about his father. Have a look at this clip. What is that change going to look like, Don? What Practically, your father as president, I think you would even say, was a divisive figure. What's it going to look like in the second term? I don't think he was a divisive figure at all. I think the media created divisiveness around him. They lied about Russia, Russia collusion. They said he was a traitor. They went after him in every which way as possible. If the media actually starts being an honest broker talking about the things that he did, the prosperity he brought, the peace deals that he signed around the world, rather than the disaster that we're living right now, I think you'd do everyone in the country a big favor. I know immigration is important to him. I covered the family separation crisis closely. Will we continue to see policies like separating 5,000 children deliberately from their parents? You mean the Obama administration? Administration, it would take you know they didn't do that, sir. Sure. Will there be a second family separation policy? It's MSDNC, so I expect nothing less from you clowns. Even, even today, even 48 hours later, you couldn't wait. You couldn't wait with your lies and with your nonsense. So just get out of here. Oh! Boom, shakalaka. That reporter just got owned by Donald Trump Jr. I love how Eric Trump, they're just like, I feel like Eric, Eric Trump, they're so tall and just so manly. It's like, you're really going to go up to Eric Trump and Donald Trump Jr. and try to talk crap about Donald Trump 48 hours after somebody just tried to assassinate him and you're going to talk crap about Donald Trump? This ain't the time or place, MSNBC. This ain't the time in, or place, you liberal reporter. Donald Trump Jr. is going to school you, brother. He's going to school you like Hulk mania, brother. <laughs> I love that duo, Eric Trump and Donald Trump Jr. Now, let's tune in to Eric Trump at, at the Benny Johnson show. Let's tune in, guys. What's going on, people? We are live here in Milwaukee for the RNC. Look at this shot. How wide can we get here? We're with the great Eric Trump. Fuck him go! Let's hear him! I love how Eric Trump is like loving this. He's like, yeah, like it's it must be so cool to be part of the Trump family right now, guys. It must be so awesome. Energy here. People are hot. People are ready to go. I'm so, I'm so happy to be here. I've been in enemy territory all day. <laughs> MSNBC, CNN. I, I mean, literally, I've got to. I've done. This is my 17th interview of the day. And to end it with the best one with somebody I love and who loves us. 17 interviews in a single day. Eric Trump loves America, guys. Thumbs it up for him. I would be so tired after 17 interviews. It's, it's beyond awesome. And we love you guys. We're having so much fun. Honestly, the heart and the soul out there at this convention is, is beyond good. Uh, the love across this country right now is unbelievable. I mean, what happened the other day is 
almost unthinkable. We lost somebody that half the country, I think it's more than half the country, I think it's a lot more than half the country, would crawl over broken glass for. And uh, to be here and, and, and be able to celebrate, to be able to celebrate the greatest president ever. And, and guys, we are going to win. We are going to win on November 5th. And we're going to have the greatest victory in the history of the United States of America. Yes! Whoa! coming out strong thumbs it up for eric guys and share these on facebook guys it helps a lot okay so here's what i've been wanting to ask because i know you are a believer uh i know your wife is a believer you often you often post about your belief in, in christ and in god and miracles wow do you believe it was a miracle yes do you believe that god's hand was on your father yes whoa i think everybody guys everybody and the Trump family knew it was a miracle. By competitive shooting. 130 yards with modern rifle is a chip shot. That's like a three inch putt for a golfer, right? You do not miss it, you never miss it. And the fact that that bullet raised his ear, the fact that he moved his head to the side, just slightly turned, the fact that he put that immigration slide up on the screen and just make no mistake, that immigration slide was supposed to be used at the end of the speech and he just felt like doing it early. So he had to turn at the screen and look up, and that's when the bullet grazed his ear. If you guys watch that whole rally from beginning to end, um, Trump was not planning to use that slide at all. He was talking about uh, Joe Biden, talking about the immigration and how we need to fix up the border. And then all of a sudden he goes, hey, can, can we get a slide up on the, on the Jumbotron? It, it like was totally improv -ed. And then that was like a minute before he ended up getting shot. So it was like, then he started turning his head to look over, and that's when uh, he dodged the bullet. Uh, it, it is absolutely an act of God that that kept him here today and you know, I don't wear that stuff on my sleeve There's a lot of people that do um, But that's pretty deep and you know, there's one other powerful moment at the time There was a flag hanging behind you know between two cranes and it flipped up over itself and it looked like an angel I, I mean not like a little bit like an angel. It looked exactly like an angel and I don't know sometimes you got to read the signs of the world and he's here and um God bless. I, I, I think my father's in iconic territory where he was going to go down as one of the greatest presidents in history. But I think he's truly, when we win in November, I think he's going to go down as truly in the leagues of, of Jefferson, in the, the leagues of, of Washington. They've tried everything, guys. They've tried everything. They've tried to take him out. They've tried to kill our family. They've tried to bankrupt him. They've turned the entire judicial system against him. They've weaponized the entire world against him. They've played every unfair trick. You know, they've lied, they've they tried to slander. And then last week, they tried to kill him. You know, a couple days ago, they tried to kill him, and I think he's gonna be revered in history as being one of the most resilient people you could have ever possibly seen, and one of the most resilient people to ever live in the Great White House. I really believe that in my heart of hearts. Wow, guys. Epic from Eric Trump. Guys, he's epic. Listen to the people. Listen to the people. Fight. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I've got. They're all chanting fight, fight, fight because those are the words that came out of. Those were the first words that came out of Trump's mouth after he got shot. Ask a question that I can ask very few people because there's very few people who can call themselves Donald Trump's son. And it must really mean, I mean, it must have been wild to experience that moment. I, I, it must have been unbelievably emotional. Now that you've had 72 hours to process it, maybe a, a lifetime to process it, it'll take, but what was it like living through that from your experience? Well, I was there with Lauren, I was there with the kids, right? And we hear the shots break on TV, and obviously we see it go down. You weren't at the rally. No, no, I wasn't at the rally. You I was watching it live yep. on TV. I mean, we almost saw the assassination of a former president on TV. I mean, think about that. Think about what that would have done to our nation. I mean, you know, civil wars have been started for, for less than than what happened there, and it's just, it's, it's, it's hard to possibly fathom, you know, that moment on live TV being broadcast the entire world. But, you know, first you're in total shock. Then you just care that he's going to get up and you're praying that the guy's going to get off off the ground. He got up, he put his fist in the air and said exactly what you guys just said. Fight, 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 fight. fight. <laughs> <laughs> you hear the people. And, and, and when he turned around, you saw all the blood on the side of his face, right? So you knew he was hit. But you didn't know if he was hit in the torso. There's too many bodies around him. There's too many people around him. So and, was, and usually there's a ton of adrenaline too when you a lot of times when you have so much adrenaline You can kind of defy like normal human things like he Trump could have got shot in the leg and the stomach and still could have gotten up and then be like Oh crap, 
It's like, but luckily Trump only got shot in the ear. Wow. First, you're concerned. When I finally spoke to him about an hour later, he's in the hospital. He called me, cracked a little joke, and I, I knew, you know, I, I knew that Donald Trump was back. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Eric. What, what was his joke? Can you, uh, well, can you, you tell us what the joke was? Trump's in the hospital. He's just been shot in the head. What's the joke? Listen, it, it had something to do with the Vander Holyfield, all right? <laughs> True father was back, right? And don't get me wrong, everybody was it was shaken up, but I'll never forget him saying, "We are not going to change a single thing about the convention. We're not going to change a single thing." He was here the exact minute he was intended to be here, despite wow. the fact. Yes. I mean, the guy's the greatest fighter I've ever met. I truly believe that he's the greatest fighter I've ever seen. There's no one that has a backbone. There's no one who could have dealt with a millionth of what he's taken. And by the way, the most incredible thing about him, he didn't need to do this. You know. Listen, Obama was a community organizer. It's like, what, what do you do from a community organizer? Like, you stay in politics for the rest of your life. Like, DJT... Okay, so I, I, I was right. I, I didn't want to say it wrong, but Mike Tyson was the... Or, or Evander Holyfield was the guy who... Mike Tyson bit off his ear, right? That's the guy, right? Evander Holyfield and Mike Tyson? Yep, that's the guy. So, Donald Trump made a joke about... Mike Tyson biting off of Andrew Holyfield's ear while he was in the hospital. That's epic. They live a much better life going out there playing golf, hanging out at mar lago you know, living a great life. He could do anything he wanted. He could go sit on a boat in the middle of the, the Mediterranean and chill out and sit mojitos or whatever, you know, Benny would be doing, you know. He wants to fight for the United States of America. He wants to fight every single day. As, as uncomfortable as it can be and, you know it's um it's just a remarkable trait and i think i think history will reward that i would be drinking trump wine eric you know, i'd be drinking the merlot of course trump <laughs> wine yes okay <laughs> so it's kind of funny because trump has never had any alcohol in his whole life so it, uh your, your father was already a hip-hop icon but now 50 cent is doing performances with your dad on the screen behind him in meme format with the words bulletproof would you guys be are you in favor of a new campaign slogan, Bulletproof? Trump, Vance, Bulletproof. Well, guys, think, it down. think about the irony of this whole thing, right? So they go and they, they indict him over total nonsense. The second they indict him, he raises about 400 million bucks, more money. Wait, 50 Cent literally did a concert with Trump in the background. That's epic, guys. This is bringing out so many people to supporting Trump right now. 50 Cent uses... Donald Trump get rich or die trying album cover edit while performing many men. That's epic. That we could have ever dreamt of in 2016. He raises about $400 million, right? And then he becomes, he gets his mugshot. Everybody's like, you shouldn't take a mugshot of the president. That's disrespectful. That mugshot raised another couple hundred million dollars. <laughs> and literally, you had entire communities in this country, including the African American community. And thank you to all the African American people here in the audience, that there's a lot of them. But literally, he becomes an icon of a community that might not have backed him in 2016. All of a sudden, they're saying, hey, you know what? I've seen this game before. They've done this to my community. I've watched them for years do this exact same thing. And you see his poll numbers rise in those communities. You see his poll numbers rise in Hispanic communities, in impoverished communities across this country. And then you see those cases get thrown out. So not only did they raise them hundreds of millions of dollars, not only did he win the vote of the very communities that they've been attacking for years and years and years, but then the lawsuits that they brought that were criminal in the first place, most of them get dismissed. I mean, it's like a Christmas gift before Christmas. It's like kind of, it's kind of <laughs> remarkable. And it's I'm all starting to come together. Everything for Donald John Trump. It's all back. There's so much backlash or... Um, it's all kind of going forward for Trump. It's all coming together. This is all part of the puzzle, my friends. I, I think in retrospect, they're going to come back to regret some of these plays. I mean, it's, I call it the law of unintended consequences. And man, if there was ever a law of unintended consequences manifest itself, it's certainly been in, uh, in this election. These guys are so incredibly smart. I love listening to them. And I always learn something when I listen to Donald Trump Jr. or Eric Trump. Or, or, or Donald Trump himself as well. These are very high IQ individuals who, you know, they are, they're very well educated. 
and they're very smart as well. JD Vance, he's very smart as well, very well educated. So I'm very curious to see how the Trump uh, JD Vance ticket will be. Um, but yeah, Eric Trump went on to say, I've never had more respect for my father. I mean, this is quite remarkable, guys. Tell me how you and your family are feeling tonight, given what almost happened, and yet the unity in this room tonight, in this at this convention, is something I haven't seen in my lifetime, really since Reagan. Well, you know, I think the duality of the world. Here I am, you know, effectively casting the deciding vote that puts my father as a Republican nominee for president of the United States one minute, and then, you know, two days ago, I was sitting with my wife and my two young children on a couch when you hear, you know, gunshots rain out, and, you know, he gets up with blood on his, you know, hands and on his face, and, you know, you think you might have lost him you know, forever. And I'll have to say he is the strongest person I've ever met. He is unbelievable. He was unrelenting. We are not changing a second of the RNC. I don't care if half my ear was blown off. I don't care. <laughs> We're moving forward. We're going to make America great again. And Laura, they put him through hell. I mean, since when he went down that escalator, they tried to impeach him. They've gone after us. They've gone after me. They've and I'm the, probably the most subpoenaed person in the history of this country. St. Jude. You're even St. Jude. Work. <laughs> they have done everything to try and strip him of his wealth and of his fame. They've tried to break up our family. They've done everything possible to try and get him and kill him. And they literally tried to kill him this week. And despite that, he's undeterred. He's unrelenting. He loves his country. He's the one billionaire who does not need to be doing this. His life would be exponentially better if he wasn't. But he wants to make America great again. And I'm so proud of him. I've never had more respect for a person in my life. And, uh, you know, it's funny. We were, I was there with Don and Tiffany and everybody else. We were in that exact same position in 2016, and we continue to fight on that stage with him every single day, and I will for the rest of my life. Wow, guys, Eric Trump, he is so awesome. And now let's tune into his speech at the RNC. Good evening, America. Eight years ago, my father sat our family down. He spoke of a nation in decline, of dreams slipping away, of a future endangered by failed leadership and broken promises. It was in that moment I knew my father had made a decision that would forever change our lives. We realized he had chosen to step into the arena to fight for the soul of America. He decided to leave behind the comforts of an unbelievable business empire, to leave behind everything he had ever built, to answer the call to serve our nation. Unlike his predecessor, it was not a decision born out of necessity. Unlike the current president, it was not a decision that would enrich his family. Rather, it was a decision made out of love for this country and a deep concern for America's future. My father was clear it would not be easy, that there would be a huge price to pay and that the attacks would be vicious. Looking back, that was an understatement. The made-up Russia hoax, the sham impeachments, the efforts to destroy an unbelievable company, a company that I run today, the efforts to cancel us, to silence him, to gag his free speech, and to drag him through every radical left courthouse in America, to take his life. Yet through it all, he's shown unwavering courage and determination not just in public, but in every private conversation with me and our family. He stood tall, fueled not by personal ambition, but by a profound love for this country and a love for all of you, the American people. That man is my father. That man is the 45th president and soon to be 47th president of the United States. That man is Donald J. Trump.
Each time I've stood on this stage, America has been at dire crossroads. In 2016, many people began to doubt the promise of America. Our economy was struggling. Jobs were scarce. Our standing on the world stage was weak at best. Veterans were forgotten. Our military was in shambles. Our educational system was broken, ranked 30th in the world. He could no longer tolerate an inept administration that handed $150 billion to Iran, a country that chanced death to America, or witness the continued attacks on our Constitution and our religious liberty, or see the disrespect shown to our unbelievable law enforcement officers who are being disarmed, defunded, and persecuted each and every day. He could no longer stand to see words like Christmas stripped from public use or the Pledge of Allegiance removed from our schools. But my father saw potential where others saw despair. Donald Trump built the New York City skyline. He did so during a time he did so during a time when businesses were turning away from the city he loved. Crime was rampant. The streets were dirty. But he had the Midas touch, and he turned those streets and neighborhoods into gold. He faced every challenge with tremendous vision and grit. As he did during the 2016 election, he rolled up his sleeves. He remained unapologetic. He did not care to be politically correct. He restored hope. He restored a voice to millions of Americans who had been ignored. He restored the American dream. Under my father's leadership, the economy climbed to record heights. Jobs were created at an unthinkable pace. Unemployment reached historic lows across all demographics. Wage growth soared. He cut taxes for hardworking families and businesses. He slashed regulations. We saw the greatest 401k increase in American history. People bought their first homes in an environment that saw 2 to 3% interest rates. They started their families. My father made the United States energy independent with the lowest gas prices in decades. My father made the United States safe. Our borders were closed. There was peace in the Middle East. Soleimani, al-Baghdadi, the terrorists were dead. My father made the United States respected again, with the courage to walk into countries like North Korea, with the courage to impose tariffs on China, and with the courage to tear up trade deals that cost Americans their jobs. He brought manufacturing back to America. Small businesses flourished. He did what he promised. He put America first. We were winning. Donald Trump made America great again. But he also created a movement, a movement that threatened the special interests in the political elites. A movement that cast a bright light on the institutions weaponized against the American people. You see it in our schools. God bless the moms who fought back. You see it in your workplace. You see it on every news station, in every newspaper. You see it in the military. The most iconic military installations on planet Earth are stripped of their identity and renamed. Fort Bragg, Benning, Fort Hood. You see it in Hollywood. You see it in our two-tier judicial system. They don't even hide it anymore. My father has been censored. The former president ripped off to Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook while terrorist organizations remain intact. My father has been persecuted, targeted by far-left Democrats, funded by special interest groups, and handpicked judges. 
My father has been pulled off the ballots of states, radical justices attempting to defy the will of millions of Americans who adore who he is and what he stands for. My father even became the target of an assassin who almost killed America's single greatest hope for our future. The swamp is terrified of this incredible moment, movement. They're terrified of it. They're terrified of you and the tens of millions of people watching us on TV right now. They've tried everything to keep him from you, everything, to destroy his legacy, to destroy his family. They have failed, and they will not win. I love my Florida delegation right here. Thank you. My father stands before you with the most votes of any Republican candidate in the history of our nation. He has defied the predictions of every political pundit. He fills stadiums across our country. He energizes Americans to the issues facing this nation and does so with unvarnished honesty. He is not a threat to democracy. He is a threat to those who despise our republic, many whom are bought and sold, bribed and coerced, people who have never signed the front of a check and who have been dependent on the government their entire adult lives. Today, as it was in 2016, America is at that crossroads again. Energy prices are soaring. Interest rates are crippling. Everything is unaffordable. The U.S. dollar has been diminished. Inflation has made it impossible for Americans to live, to save for their future. Our infrastructure is crumbling. Our border is out of control. Millions are dead and displaced in Russia and Ukraine, a war that has no end and a war that we are funding. The Middle East has become a hornet's nest. Our greatest ally, Israel, totally under siege. Fentanyl is killing our youth and destroying families, while the current administration stands idly by, hoping their inaction will import illegal votes. Crime terrorizes our cities and our suburbs as far-left policies handcuff police. Male athletes, guys my height, six foot five, are swimming in women's sports. destroying the dreams of young girls who have trained every minute of their lives. We no longer trust our elections. We no longer trust our judicial system. And we no longer believe that our government is working in our best interest. In spite of where we are today as a nation, I'd like to speak to every American, to the homeless veteran, sleeping under a bridge as illegal immigrants are housed in the most expensive hotels in New York. I'm sorry, we know it's wrong and we will fix it. To the single mother who can no longer afford her rent, afford groceries, and has been forced to work three jobs. I'm sorry, it does not have to be this way. To the parents who lost a son or daughter to fentanyl, including the incredible woman that spoke the other night, while an administration does absolutely nothing, I'm sorry, your government can do so much better, and it will. To the children who are being brainwashed instead of learning the fundamentals of school, I'm sorry, there are teachers who care and my father will empower them. To the law enforcement officers, our brave board patrols, secret service agents who work every single day to protect our communities, 
knowing damn well that the system will throw you under the bus, I'm sorry. We will stand behind you. <laughs> to commuters often petrified to take a bus, take a train, or walk the streets in cities across our nation, I'm sorry. That man right there will fix this. To the construction workers, to the middle class families, to the families with children with disabilities, families who can no longer afford medical benefits or to take a vacation, I'm sorry, we will make America great again. And to my father, who has been ruthlessly silenced slandered, and attacked by a corrupt administration, I'm sorry. We know, and America knows, that they're not just after you, they're after all of us, and you just happen to be standing in their way. To all Americans watching tonight, the greatest retribution will be our success. Success not just for ourselves, but for our grandchildren and our children. Under President Donald J. Trump, the swamp will be drained. America will be respected. Our cities will be safe. Our streets will be clean. And our border will once again be secure. We will have peace. We will have prosperity. Your hard-earned tax dollars will enrich a better America, not be squandered in corrupt foreign nations. Education will be handed back to the states. We will no longer be 30th in the world. We will be first. Our children will understand family, our children will have values, and our children will love God. Our country will prioritize free speech, respect freedom of religion, and honor our Constitution. As his son, I've never been more proud of a person in my life. A man who has defied all odds more than once. A man who believed in the promise of America when others turned away. A man who saw a nation in need of a champion and answered that call with unwavering determination and courage. A man who survived a bullet that was intended to eliminate him permanently from our future and from our family. Never have I been more proud to be a Trump. Never have I been more proud to stand by my father's side. I remain incredibly honored to be part of this journey, a journey with all of you, a journey to save the greatest country on earth, a journey with the most incredible people I have ever met. Dad, five days ago, Laura, Luke, Carolina, and I held our breath as we saw blood pour across your face. By the grace of God, divine intervention, and your guardian angels above, you survived.
You are the greatest fighter I have ever seen. You are strong, you are full of life, and you are unapologetic. Your optimism is contagious. Your backbone is unbreakable. Your conviction to fight for what is right and against all that is wrong is truly next level. The whole world saw your strength as you stood up. You wiped the blood off your, your face and you put your fist in the air in a moment that will be remembered as one of the most courageous acts in the history of American politics. You shouted, fight, fight, fight. I'm honored to be your son. I'm honored to speak to our great nation tonight. You are a true leader. You epitomize strength. Our country loves you. Our country appreciates you. Our country misses you. And on November 5th, our country will re-elect you as the 47th President of the United States of America. Good night, Milwaukee. God bless you all. Wow, guys, what an amazing speech from Eric Trump. Let me know your thoughts on this. Take care and God bless.